Okay, so welcome back. This is part four in our series where we're discussing this really amazing device here. And this is a very inexpensive, about four US dollars or up to eight US dollars. It's a complete Arduino Uno, but it also has the ability to communicate over Wi-Fi. So you can effectively disconnect this completely from your computer, take it remotely, and as long as you're within Wi-Fi distance, you can access the GPIO pins, you can access this device, you can gather data, you can control devices remotely. In this series, we're showing you how this works. And in this video, we're going to show you how to program this Arduino so that you can access the GPIO pins and operate this over Wi-Fi. Now, as we mentioned, you can take this remotely. Uh, you do have to power it somehow. And we've got here a very inexpensive a smartphone battery, USB connected, that you can just plug in and power this and you're all set to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to actually utilize this in a project. And the project is going to be that we will measure the frequency in real time of the wall outlet voltage supplied by the power company. And that will be calculated inside this device and it will send the resulting frequency measurements over Wi-Fi that you can access with your computer. And ultimately, we're going to build this project where we take this Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi and put it in this box, very inexpensive box, and we're going to add a like four US dollar external Wi-Fi antenna to improve the range of this and all we have to do is take it remotely, plug it into a wall outlet, and it will measure the frequency of the voltage of that wall outlet and send it over your computer. And the software that we're developing in this video and the next video will allow you to do what you see here. I've got a uh, application that is listening to the Arduino with Wi-Fi, you can see on the bench, and it is grabbing data over Wi-Fi from that Arduino. And that Arduino, as you can see, is connected to a signal generator that is being fed a 60 hertz replica of what you might get from the wall outlet from your power company. And it is measuring the frequency coming from that signal generator and sending it as data over Wi-Fi. And we are grabbing that in our client server configuration on the computer in this application, you can see it's measuring exactly 60.00. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write the Arduino code. There's two sketches we need to write, one for the ATmega328 and one for the ESP8266 to allow you to do this measurement of the frequency and also to send it over Wi-Fi. So as we mentioned before in the previous videos in the series, and I encourage you to take a look at those, uh, we're going to have two sketches, and you can see the two sketches here, in order to do this frequency measurement and send the results over Wi-Fi. The first one is going to be for the ATmega328, and the other one is going to be for the ESP8266. And again, we showed you how to do these and how to upload them uh, in the previous videos. So um, first we'll start with the ATmega328 sketch, which is one that actually senses the incoming waveform from the wall outlet voltage and calculates the frequency, and then it sends the resulting frequency measurement to the ESP8266, and that sketch is going to take that value that it calculated and send it over Wi-Fi to your computer. So let's first take a look at the ATmega328 sketch that does all the work. In the documentation, this ATmega328 sketch initializes its internal timer one and every cycle of the incoming waveform on the D2 pin, it detects the zero crossings and uses those to set reset the timer, the counter that's counting the frequency. Then every 0.1 seconds, it grabs the latest count of the number of two megahertz pulses measured in one period of the incoming wave, converts the count into a frequency value and sends that string that looks like this to the ESP8266 over the serial connection between them. Now, it's important that you understand uh, in doing this calculation, this ATmega328 is using timers and interrupts. And I did a recent video going through the details. It's a fairly complicated subject, but we, we went through the details and made it very easy to understand. So you really need to look at that video 
And we talked about the code that we're using to do that frequency measurement in that previous video. So I'll show you the code here, but we're not going to talk about it in much detail. We have our void set up, and this is going to actually set up and start the counting of the incoming waveform frequencies. And it's going to do it every cycle of the uh, incoming waveform, and it's going to use an internal timer. Again, we talked about this previously. We're setting a unused register to zero. And here we are telling the ATmega328 that we want to use its 16 megahertz internal clock signal. However, we want to drop that down to only two megahertz. And we talked about why, and this is the line of code that will set that value that we drop it down by a factor of eight. And it's also going to start the timer or the counter. And then we're going to do t count equals zero. We're resetting the timer one that we're using. We're setting that to zero. And that's going to be the value that we're counting up every two megahertz. And then we have a uh, timer one overflow interrupt. We're enabling t i m s k one equals one. We're clearing the i n t zero flag e, e i f r equals one. Again, we go into that in the other video on timers and interrupts. And here is the line of code that actually defines the interrupt that's going to use the signal from the wall outlet coming into pin two. Uh, it's going to run this method. It's kind of like the event handler. And we're going to do it when we see a rising edge on the incoming wave. So attach interrupt, digital pin to interrupt, timer one get, and rising. And then we're defining an integer timer one, which we're going to keep track of the count every cycle. And we're defining this frequency value. And this is the event handler. This is the method that gets called every time we get a rising edge on the incoming uh, waveform. Timer one get. And we're setting our internal timer one to whatever the counter, the clock counter value is. Every At the end of every period, we're setting our internal value to that. And then we're resetting that counter to start again for the next cycle. And then we have this interrupt service routine. We talked about that for overflow mode. If we, for whatever reason, if the timer goes past its ability to count and it overflows, then we're going to reset that timer value. Again, we talked about this in the previous video on uh, events and uh, interrupts. Now, this void loop is where we actually grab the value, the count every, that's grabbed every cycle of the incoming waveform and convert that to an actual frequency value. So this value that we're going to be using is set to the current timer one value, which is an integer number of counts at a rate of, in our case, 2 million counts per second or 2 megahertz between rising edge interrupts. So for a 60 hertz signal, value would be 33,333. So what we're doing every tenth of a second, we've got this delay of tenth of a second, uh, we are grabbing whatever the latest count is for the latest period of the waveform, and that's going to be our value. If it's zero, we're just going to set the frequency to zero. However, if it's a legitimate value, we're going to say frequency equals two megahertz divided by the number of counts, and that will give us the frequency. And all we're doing is we're doing a serial print line to send it over the internal serial connection to the ESP8266. And we're sending this frequency value, and we're using a value of two decimal points. So it's just sending that value to the ESP8266. And then next, we'll go to the ESP8266 sketch, where it will catch that value and send it over Wi-Fi. And then the bottom of the loop is just delaying a tenth of a second, and we'll do it again and grab the latest value. Again, we're calculating every cycle of the incoming waveform, but we're only grabbing it every tenth of a second or 10 times a second. So that is the frequency counter functionality in the um, ATmega328. So next we're going to look at the ESP8266 sketch, which grabs that value and sends it over Wi-Fi. This sketch connects the Arduino to a server over Wi-Fi. It, it's operating as a client here via the ESP8266, and every half second, it grabs the latest value from the AT Mega and sends it over Wi-Fi to the server. And we mentioned in order to program this, you have to get in a certain mode. We mentioned that in the previous videos. Here's the ESP8266 sketch. Uh, we talked about all of this setup 
to log into the Wi-Fi and do the SSID and the password and set this up as a client. I'm not going to go through that again. We talked about that. And the void setup, we're just going to start a serial begin, 115-200 baud. Uh, we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi network, and then we're going to try to connect to the Wi-Fi every half second until connected. And at this point, we should be connected to the Wi-Fi. Again, look at the previous video on this. And here's the void loop. As long as the Arduino isn't connected to the server, this while loop will attempt to connect. So while it's not connected, we're going to try a client.connect to the host and port number. Now, again, I talked about in great detail about port numbers and IP addresses in separate videos. I encourage you to look at that. And then we're going to just grab whatever response we get from the ATmega with that red value. And it's going to look like a 60.00 with a carriage return and line feed. And the way we're going to do it is since we're doing this every half a second, um, but the ATmega is grabbing the latest value every tenth of a second, there's probably going to be a bunch of values in the buffer. So what we're going to do is we're going to read all the values in the buffer and just use the latest one. Um, again, you can change this time delay, but this just goes to show how you can do it. So we're going to read responses from the AT Mega. We're going to read all available frequency values in the input buffer, but save only the latest one to send to the C Sharp application. So the way we do that is we do while serial.available, while there's data in the serial buffer, we're going to read the string until we get this new line or line feed character. So we're going to read all of the available strings, all of the 60.00 backslash r backslash n strings in the buffer. And then when we get to the last one in the buffer, it's going to be no more serial available, but we've already set the receive string to whatever the latest one was. Receive string should show us the latest reading. So now that we've got that string, all we have to do is send it over Wi-Fi. And to do that, we do client.print, whatever that string is. So really pretty straightforward. Again, we go into detail on how we do this in previous videos. And then we delay and we go through the loop again. So every half second, it's grabbing the latest from the AT Mega and sending it to Wi-Fi. Pretty straightforward. So that's about it for the sketches. Now in the next video, we're going to show you how to tweak the C Sharp application we've developed before so that it can do this um, reading of the value sent over the Wi-Fi, and then it will display the latest reading in our C Sharp application. So I encourage you to look at that. But that's about it for this one. In the next one, we'll look at C Sharp application. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.